Uh, so I'm just going to spend a, a couple of minutes discussing what the problem is, and then the rest of the time uh, trying to discuss how we are thinking about uh, neuropsychiatric involvement in lupus. So the first problem with discussing brain involvement in lupus is the nomenclature. And prior to 1999, uh, lupus cerebritis was kind of a global term that was used to describe all, ki all kinds of brain events that occur in lupus, and anything from very focal syndromes such as stroke to very diffuse uh, syndromes such as severe cognitive impairment or severe depression, catatonia, psychosis, and, and anything in between. So that ki kind of terminology was not very useful for helping inform us about how these syndromes occur and what can we do about them. And in 1999, the ACR convened um, uh, a group of physicians and scientists who came up with a list of the neuropsychiatric syndromes. And these are 19 defined syndromes. And in addition to defining what these syndromes are, um, the committee came up with a list of ascertainment procedures uh, and attribution, because really the name of the game is attribution. And all of the things you see here listed on this slide can occur for many different reasons. So by definition, if we're saying it's part of lupus, it must be attributable to lupus and not to the medications patients are on, not to infection, not to any other problem, but strictly to lupus. Um, so now we have this framework provided by the ACR. And has that improved our ability to identify the neuropsychiatric syndromes? So I've listed on this slide eight of the studies. Uh, these are all cross-sectional studies that have been published since that time. And um, what I did was on the bottom row list prevalence. And you can see that the prevalence of neuropsychiatric syndromes is anywhere from 12.2 to 95 percent with a lot in between. So that doesn't seem like a huge step in the right direction. Um, it is a little more informative when you look at uh, I individual syndromes to see which ones um, in general are more prevalent than others, and in all of the studies virtually, the more diffuse central syndromes such as cognitive dysfunction, mood disorder, headache, seizure, anxiety disorder, those all come out on top, and following that, um, particularly the peripheral neuropathies, gigan barre types of things, those are extremely rare. And that pretty much goes across the board. And why are there such big differences in, um, in prevalence overall? Probably is not due, a lot of these groups are diff um, encompass different ethnic groups, but it's much more likely that the differences arise from problems with ascertainment um, and problems with attribution of these syndromes. Uh, to date, there are really, as far as I know, two prospective cohorts that are studying neuropsychiatric syndromes. One is the SLIC cohort, and another is, um, I think it's called the Brain Connection uh, from Maryland. And I think that over time, those cohorts are going to help inform us a lot more about the, these disease processes. But what we know now is that neuropsychiatric events have occurred in 28 to 33 percent of patients enrolled at the time, uh, well, within 15 months of their diagnosis. But out of that 28 to 33 percent, 17 to 38 percent are attributable to neuropsychiatric, to lupus. Um, and 93% of these events occur within the central nervous system as opposed to the peripheral nervous system. Um, looking at MRI studies at diagnosis, 35% of the patients have evidence of atrophy on MRI and 8% have focal lesions. 